Cubs starting rotation is set. We know who the five pitchers are going to be, and we know who's pitching opening day. Now, we don't know the order, but we're going to talk about that rotation, even with Jamison Tyone out right now for the Cubs. David Bodie sent back to the minor leagues. And all the news and notes from Cubs baseball this week. It's time for Friendly Confines Weekly. And we want to get this party started the right way. And that's invite you to the Cubs baseball channel. Like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. That's a great way of saying that you enjoy Cubs content. And hit the bell so you know when we're dropping new content. Let's get this party started. Go Cubs. So everybody, there he is, meow meow. It's Mr. Catfish at this chat is real. I'm yeah. at Jesus Lord, we haven't seen you in forever. We just haven't seen you in forever. So well, I've been helping Otani's interpreter. I'd say you've been making, <laughs> making bets with him. Uh, friendly confines weekly, and uh, it's part of the Cubs baseball channel. I love love to talk Cubs baseball with you though. Uh, yeah, I mean, here we are, less than a week away. From crazy opening day, man. Yeah, six days, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, closing in, closing. Yeah, in. Cubs but, and the uh, Texas Rangers. I know yeah. I joke about Otani, but doesn't this make you glad that you didn't sign Otani? Well, you wonder like what the real? Dollars? Yeah, yeah, right. Like, oh, yeah. I don't want to get off on Otani, but I'm just like, you know, you start thinking about it, it's like, man, what a what an up and down, right? If you're if you're a Dodger fan, it's like, what is this going to look like? But what, what does this it. mean? Yeah. What if yeah. he was the next Pete Rose, the Japanese Pete Rose? That's what Babe Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't, I really don't know what like the whole thing's going to be when it's all said and done, but any, any time something like that happens and, you know, and you, you start to speculate and look around, you know, it's no good, you know, especially when it comes to gambling, but um, right. We'll take him for his word right now. Um, there, there was one a funny Cubs story. There, the Cubs had an interpreter one time for, for Fukudomi who didn't yeah. speak, didn't speak Japanese. <laughs> My, I, I saw somebody tweet the other day and said, "Hey, I'll uh, I'll take Otani's interpreter job. I've got an iPhone with Google Translate." And I was just like, "Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean." I guess you can't have devices out there on the on the field unless you're the Astros. But um, but yeah, it's just was <laughs> Google Translate. I uh, I've been you know out of the country a few times. Like that's what we use. You know, yeah, you just hold it up, say something here. But how do you like? I, I, how do you? <laughs> I guess just because we don't know Japanese, and Fukudomi was probably like telling this guy what to say, and he's just like. Uh, like talking, yeah. but he doesn't really know, you know, he's like, I didn't just say that. Like, <laughs> oh man, that's a funny story. I go going way back. All right. Well, let's, let's talk about the starting rotation. This doesn't surprise me at all. Right. But the uh, starting rotation is exactly what I would have done if I was Craig council, right. Uh, Justin Steele opening day starter. And yep. then he hasn't named like what day, or what spot in the rotation everyone is, but Kyle Hendricks, Shota Imanaga, Jordan Wicks, and Javier Assad. Those are the guys that are going to be the five. Now, he did say that Drew Smiley would pitch some, uh, start some, maybe he'd be in the bullpen, and that Hayden was Nesky, who's kind of battling for that, you know, that fifth spot, which I never thought he was going to get it, um, could, could make the team in the bullpen. Yeah. He um was Nesky kind of had a rough spring. So he hopefully he gets it kind of figured out. I mean, it's spring training, but still, um, you know, there's Do you worry be- about that though. Some of these guys like they they're doing different stuff, but you figure for him he needed results. Well, it it's more just because of the track record for him. You know, he was the big name a couple of years ago of kind of like what Jordan Wicks is now. Um, yeah. Oh, this guy's coming up. He's going to be great. He's going to kind of anchor down the rotation. Everybody was excited about how the Cubs got him from the Yankees. Um, and he had flashes, but he just hasn't lived up. Um, he was just, 
kind of that, especially like if you play fantasy baseball, he was the guy, Hey, this, is some, this guy for the Cubs may make the fifth man uh, around out the rotation. So grab him and then just, you know, it didn't work out and didn't pan out. And so that's the only reason I say like a good spring would have done him a lot of good, but it's a little bit off to a bumpy start here. Um, yeah, I mean, I like the rotation tie on that's frustrating because he pitched better um, towards the end of last year. Plus you paid him a lot of money. So you're hoping that you get something out of the contract and he's going to start the year on the IL. Um, but I, I would think if it was me, you go steal, and then I would go Assad after that, and you go lefty righty. Um, not Hendricks. No, I wouldn't. I I would actually put Hendricks more at the back end. But hmm. you're gonna split them up left, right, left, right, left, and then you're gonna have back to back lefties at some point. Yeah, um, here or there, and then Smiley's a lefty. So if you throw him in there, you got another lefty in the rotation. So. But I would do that. I I just like what Assad did last year, man. I mean, when he was starting, he was lights out. He was great. Um, so I would actually go with him. Um, I love Kyle, but he's just gotten a little bit older, more of a back end rotation guy to me. So I'd go steal Assad, uh, Imanaga, Hendricks, and then Wicks to mm-hmm. round it out would be my five. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I look, I, I haven't thought of that, but all Assad's ever done is just get outs. Yeah. And and maybe it's not like up to the standard of some of the analytics. Like where it's like, well, you know, the, the, the velo isn't there. You know, it, I don't like the shape of the curveball. You know, I, the spin rate. You know, yeah, but, the spin but, rate, the contact rate. Yeah, all yeah, that. right. But when it's all said and done, like the guy's pretty good. Like he's been. N- there was never a doubt in my mind that this wasn't the five that they were going to use. I was surprised that some people were really pushing. Was Nesky just because I, I mean, you've seen that there's been times where he's looked really good, but consistency hasn't been there. When you compare him to Assad, Assad's consistently been good. Like, you know, you know what you're going to get, right? It's, it's not like, um, you know, it's, it's not overpowering stuff, but he'll, he'll take advantage of, uh, pitch to contact outs. He changes speeds. Guys don't seem to really like, you know, get a good swing on him. So I, I I'm down with that. And honestly, even Aga has been so much fun to watch this yeah. spring. I mean, after that first outing, you know, it was like, okay, you know, he's, he started to really work away and then kind of sneak in with the, with his fastball. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to see what that's going to look like. I mean, I, I know there's going to be some growing pains in there, but um, he's someone that I'm confident that could have a really good year. Yeah, no, I'm with you. So that's what I would like to see. Um, I still think, I mean, nothing against these guys. I've just, I've always been of the opinion that baseball players, as much as they are humans, it's also like stocks, you know? And I still go back to last year and you have to buy low and sell high. And so I really think if you if you look at this year and Drew Smiley gets some opportunities and pitches really well and he wants to be a starter, like this year, move him early. Like I still go back to last season and it frustrates me. We talked about this where you had two guys just pitching their you know what off. Right. Like with Marcus Stroman and Drew Smiley. And you didn't do either, you didn't move either one of them. You missed the playoffs. And Stroman took free agency, which is fine. I mean, we didn't want him back. You and I didn't, you know, we'd rather move on anyway, (laughs) but Smiley didn't have a good second half. And it was like, you missed out, you know, you could have gotten something. So I just, some of these guys, it's like, uh, again, buy low, sell high situation. And when you've got a little bit of an abundance here, then take advantage of some of that. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out and pans out, but um, something to watch. The other thing is how long is it going to take for, Jamison Tyone to return, right? He had yeah. some soreness in his calves, and then that turned into a back issue. He didn't throw in any spring training games, was throwing some, uh, you know, expecting him to throw off the mound this week. You know, some of that stuff is, um, you know, hasn't really been released yet. I mean, like they go on backfield. Sometimes they do that in places where you're not going to see it. But um, Jed Hoyer basically said, that they did an MRI on his back and 
it looked relatively clean. I think is the way that he put it. You know, how long is it going to be before Tyone's back? And and how does I don't think that only makes you better. I mean, when he does return, right? Oh, sure. I mean, that's that's just it. You know, how long do you have to um, you know, not suffer, but you know, just kind of hang on and and work through and have some people fill some spots and some gaps um before you're able to to get a is he the what is he second or is he the third highest paid pitcher um that the Cubs have? I want to say uh, second, right? Because Imanaga would be one, and then yeah, I'm, and I think Tyon would, would be two. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, when you're spending money, you need those guys on the field. So, but at the same time, that's the whole thing with pitching, right? Is you're protecting investments because mm -hmm. pitchers go down, and it, it can be a while. I don't like that it's the back. I mean, I'm glad that they are saying, "Hey, you know, it should be okay," or it "didn't look too bad," or "it looked relatively clean," or however you want to phrase it. Um, Things like a blister are better, <laughs> you know, or um, something like that. At least it's not an arm injury. That can always get scary when you get like tightness in the elbow or in the shoulder or something. But, um, you know, we'll see. But, yeah, they, it also sucks a little bit being a Cubs fan because you start out the season, your games are in Wrigley. It's cold. Yeah, right. I mean, it's it's not like you're pitching in Florida where mm -hmm. it's warm, you know, and the back's able to move around. You keep the blood flowing. You're you're loose faster. You know, you play out there in the cold and you get tight fast and things like that. So it, it almost early in the season may take a, an extra week or two compared to maybe being somewhere else. Cubs catching situation is set, and that includes Jan Gomes. No surprise. You know, he'd be the starter. And then Miguel Amaya uh, being the guy who will probably see a lot more playing time than he did last year. Uh, the Cubs also notified Jorge Alfaro and Joe Hudson that they won't make the team. They're still sticking around. And of course, um, you know, Wyndham was sent back to AAA already. But I, I look at the Cubs organizational depth and I don't feel very confident and what they have when you get outside of, you know, the big leagues. And I worry about Gomes, who I think is a great player. I love Gomes, you know, but he's also in his late thirties. And now we've seen catchers that have hung around the big leagues for a long time, you know, and he's in good shape. Then you got Amaya. But then after that, I mean, it's not like you have like with the outfield or with some of the infield spots or even some pitching where you have a lot of prospects. There's really not much there, you know. Um, so the two veteran catchers got to figure out what they're going to do. Are they going to take a minor league assignment or, are they, you know, are they going to go and be, become free agents? Um, they were good signings because you're like, hey, going into camp, you know, if something happens. Yeah. But it also tells me what the Cubs – issue is as far as organizational depth when you got to go out and sign a bunch of guys to 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 be your basically your third catcher third and fourth catcher because you're not real confident in the guys that you have in the minor leagues if something happens well and and yes and obviously it's a big position defensively um i don't know Mick, on the catcher side and i get what you're saying um and the cubs haven't had it but how much do you value position of catcher I, I think that defensively, right, one of the most important positions on the field. And when when they let uh, Wilson Contreras walk, you know, I, I I just was thinking to myself, like, okay, he's going to get a big contract, but at the same time, he's been your guy. I know defensively, you know, framing. Some people don't like that that he wasn't a good framer. He's a good thrower. He was also part of your World Series team. He's been through your organization. I I, I think that to me. I probably would have tried to figure out a way to sign him, but David Ross wasn't a big fan. And he made that apparent with that story in the athletic. Now I'd heard that off the record too. So I wasn't surprised when that kind of came out, but at the same time, I think it's a really important position because if you got bad catchers or you don't have catchers, it's going to affect your pitching. And obviously with the way that, teams run now with these bigger bases and less throws to first base, you know, it, it, it can become one of those situations where you can't throw anybody out. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I, and I, I understand what you're saying. I don't disagree with, well, I disagree with me if you want, I, I, yeah, I I'm, feel I'm with you on it, but I'm with you on it from a position standpoint. 
Um, but I don't, I didn't particularly like Wilson in his later Cub years. Mm -hmm. When he was first on the scene, he almost reminded me of like a watered down Javi Baez. You know, he just kind of carried that chip on the shoulder, had that spark, that attitude, reminded me of like a Zambrano, you know, those kinds of players um, where the emotion was on the sleeve. But I think as it got further along and it, it just sometimes like as good as that energy and attitude can be in a clubhouse, it can also be a bad thing, you know, like because it's so polarizing. You, right. you can go from one end of the spectrum to the other with that guy all in the same game. Yeah. And so when you look at those and, you know, how many innings you get out of catchers and how often they play, um, he actually stayed healthy from what I remember. Um did a pretty good job of that, but just over, over time, I don't know. That one was one where I was like, eh, I, I always get leery of, uh, big contracts with catchers, but he, um, you know, he served his purpose. He did a good job. He got his world series, um, built his name with the Cubs, but I was actually okay. Um, letting him walk just cause I'm, I'm one of those guys that when that attitude's working, it's working. Yeah. But right. when it's bad, it can drag a lot of people down. Cubs are going to have to do a better job, though, of focusing on catchers in the draft. I mean, they've they've got they to develop. They yeah, right. I mean, you know, Pablo Aliendo is their best catching prospect, in my opinion, and then Moises Ballesteros is the highest rated because he can hit, but he can't catch even close to the level that you would have to. Now he can hit, and he's got great hands and all of that. To get to the point where the Cubs have the same type of competition that they're dealing with right now in the outfield and you know what we're going to see in the infield it was it was great to have Matt Mervis and and Michael Bush battling it out this spring even though we knew Michael Bush was going to get the job Mervis right. had a good spring it that's a good thing it, it's a good thing when Christopher Morell's playing third but Matt Shaw's up there and even though he's not going to make the team he's still showing you that there's options or Owen Casey in the outfield Right. You want that. But there's just not that right now catching wise in the organization. And that's one area where it starts with with drafting or maybe, you know, sometimes you can take people, players from other positions and move them to catcher. One of the best examples of that was when the Cubs took Robinson Torinos as a shortstop and turned him into a catcher. If he hadn't have had concussion issues, he would have been one of the best players at that position in baseball. Just, yeah. it, you know, it was a bad luck with injuries, but he was amazing. I remember him from the double A West Tennessee Diamond Jacks. Yeah. Or yeah. the Jackson Generals. I don't know which one they were at the time, but it was, uh, it was one of those. Yeah. So he, 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 he played for the Smokies and destroyed the Diamond Jacks. Um, <laughs> as a, Oh, he did. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of a different, uh, ah, who played for the, who played for the Jackson Generals? Would have been because I, I did know it would, no, have, I, it would have been. I can't one. remember which one it was to, to be honest. The one year I was in the league, uh, you're right, Torino. So I apologize with Smokies, but there's somebody, um, oh, I'm gonna have to go back and look it Some, up. Now. Somebody, it's, it's been a minute. There were a couple of real big names that were on that uh West Tennessee team, and mm -hmm. I had Torino's confused with one of them i'm gonna have to go back and look because that's gonna drive me nuts yeah you're gonna look back and you're like oh yeah that they would have been i think they were diamondbacks maybe because i was with the Adam. brewers and yeah, the big names we had were lorenzo kane that was probably the biggest name oh, yeah. and brett laurie but kane ended up having a better major league career than laurie did what well, makes you uh, feel old that all those guys have retired now yeah, I know. <laughs> That's how quick baseball is. It's Had a great career, won a World Series, and retired. Yes. Um, all right, so here's an, some more news. Uh, David Bodie yesterday was optioned back to the minor leagues, sent back to the minor leagues. They, they made a move, five different players. But this was the one that w when you were looking at it, you're like, okay, is, is there a chance that Bodie makes the team? And, you know, I had Al Yellen on from Bleed Cubby Blue, and he felt like Bodie – had a shot to make the roster. I, I I really didn't think so, but I hoped so just because he had such a great spring. He had the home runs. He played great defensively. He's paid $5.5 million and he's in the minors. He's got a big league contract and he's in the minor leagues, but he still didn't make the team. I still think we'll see him at some point, but that was a little surprised by that. 
Yeah. Um, I don't know what you do with Bodie. <laughs> We've talked about him and the poor guy, he, he at least got him a good contract and he's got that memorable walk-off grand slam against the mm-hmm. nationals on Sunday night baseball. Yeah. But other than that, I, I step back and I'm just like, man, um, where does the guy go? <laughs> because the Cubs are just overloaded with prospects and talent. It's like, unless you, unless somebody gets injured, right? Like, you you're probably going to give some some playing time or some options um to guys who can come up and you know kind of make a name for themselves yeah at the big league level so i i feel bad for him he's been with the cubs for quite a while now he got him like i said a decent contract um cashed in on that but he's literally stuck he's almost going to be what feels like kind of that 4a player um in his career well, no and, one's going to touch him and pick that five point five million up, right? That's what I mean. Yeah. So if the Cubs do trade him or you know somebody signs him, whatever, like I would think you know it would be something where the Cubs eat the salary to get get a prospect, maybe or something. But even then, why wouldn't they just keep the prospect? I don't know. Uh, I just it's it's literally a black hole for for Bodie right now. I think the thing that hurts him the most is Miles Masterboni and him kind of do the same thing, except Miles can play shortstop, and I just don't feel like that's something that, you know, that Bodie can do. I, I think yeah. you, can, you can put him out there, but it's just a, it's a big position for him. Well, uh, third well, remember, base. David Ross did play Patrick Wisdom at second base last year in September. So. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> it's probably why he's not the manager right now. Yeah. Wisdom, let's talk about Wisdom then. Uh, Wisdom's still dealing with this back injury. He's going to yeah. make the team. Now it's all in question. I mean, they've got to figure out what they're doing. It's not like wisdom to me was a lock. I mean, I guess he was going to make the team because of his power. But besides hitting home runs, I, I you know, and some extra base hits, he strikes out a lot. He's not very good defensively in my mind. He's, he's a very no. one-dimensional player. But home runs are valuable. And um, he does that. With all of that said, now he's got the back injury. Bodie sent down. What, what do you think the Cubs do? I mean, do you think it's it's Garrett Cooper who could opt out at any time now? Uh, is it, you know, is Do- Dominique Smith, you know, these these guys that they signed or big league players to minor league contracts? Uh, I don't think it's going to be David Peralta just because of the arm issue and he doesn't play first base. Um, and I felt like Wisdom was kind of a platoon guy, right? Because he's gonna you yeah. got Bush, but then you got him. I I don't know. I I'm so curious to see what's gonna happen. Yeah, um, those guys, and then I mean, you still have you got what Morell, Nico, Dansby, Bush. Um, That's your starting infield to me, right? And then uh, so Wisdom was gonna be a platoon guy for sure. Right. Um, or I was with you on that. I didn't see Bodie making the team. I did see wisdom making the team. Um, I, I'm ashamed for not knowing this, uh, Madrigal or is he banged he's up? Been hurt. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's been hurt. Yeah. Still, he's still, he's still hurt. Right. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you I, start I, to run out of options and then I don't know what you do. You know, we mentioned, I think you mentioned earlier in the show, Mervis, um, do you do anything? Minor leagues? Yeah. I mean, I, and I yeah. think once you send someone down, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm guessing you're going to have one 40 man roster opening when, uh, Caleb Killian is put on the 60 day IL, right? right. Who actually had a pretty good spring going. He uh, did so, in the arm issues. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so then what, you know, t- so you could possibly sign Garrett Cooper, who's been good this spring. And I think like a lot of people in the comment section have been like, Hey, you know what? I, I, I think Cooper would be that. I don't see Dom Smith being the guy. And honestly, a, a, a couple of years ago, David Peralta has had the better career of all these guys, but he had the surgery on his arm. He's not throwing very well. Plus he plays the outfield. Um, I, but I'm not sure. I mean, it's it, as this thing dwindles down, my, my best guess would be Garrett Cooper, first base outfield, probably going to be the guy that you say, Hey, you know what? He's kind of like wisdom doesn't have quite the power that wisdom has, but he's a better defender. Plus, you know, I mean, you're going to maybe, maybe a couple less home runs, but le- less strikeouts. I, I don't know. No, no yeah. one really makes me really excited. Like, I'm not like, oh, this is going to be great. Like, it's more like, you know. Yeah, and I mean, you got 
Luis Vasquez. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned him or not. Yeah, um, sent back to the minors, but I mean, he's always back. an option, you know. The the but he's more of a you middle start to run out of options. Too, yeah. So, so well, I'm thinking uh, it's corner. I'm thinking you're 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 looking like corner spot with some pop, you yeah. know. And 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 yeah. honestly, well, they, I talked about this the other day. JD Martinez is unsigned now. He's only a DH. Yeah, he's a DH only. But, guy, but he's yeah. been an All Star the last three years, and it's, you know, and some of you guys are like, "Well, everybody makes the All Star team." Look, not everybody. I mean, the guy. If if you were better than somebody that didn't make the All Star team, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you look at his numbers, and I mean, he's like the minute you put him on the team, he's the third best hitter, right? It would be, it it, it would be Bellinger, and then and then um, Saya, and then him, right? Not yeah. they're not doing that, but I'm just saying if they did, but it's an option. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you mentioned Cooper, and then there's Bodie, um, and Cooper's thirty, well, almost thirty four years old, um, but then there's Matt Shaw and Chase Strumpf, um, you know, out there as out there as well um, that you could you could pull up, but um, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. It's kind of a crapshoot, right? And then sometimes too, you don't want to call up guys that you see as future MLB players because you don't want them sitting on the bench. You want them getting at bats right. yeah. and in a different level and getting the daily at bats rather than seeing the plate, you know, six times a week. Yeah. You want to, you want them to see the plate 25 times a week. Right. So that that's where it can hurt too, depending on who you call up and who's just kind of that stop gap. Yeah, no doubt. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, in like, Every time we turn around, you know, something else is coming. But a lot of times it, you, you have the spring training ends and then you have that day and and then you you put the roster together and it, and it comes down to the very end. So it's not like we're waiting on a lot of answers here. I mean, pretty much you, you got the that all the main players are in. We know the starting rotation. There's a couple spots in the bullpen. You know, will will Carl Edwards Jr. make the team? I certainly hope so, just because you know. Obviously, I'm I'm a huge fan of his. Love CJ. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would love. Look, if you're going to throw somebody in the bullpen, I mean, you just sent Keegan Thompson down, and why not him? Uh, you know, I think there's there could be a spot for him. Maybe Hayden Wisniewski's kind of battling for that same spot. But there's a couple spots in the bullpen. You you got your catchers figured out now with Gomes and Almaya, and you got um, Bush at first. Obviously, Bellinger can play there too. You got Nico and you got Dansby and you got Morell as your infield. I'm guessing that Miles Masterbone is going to make the team as the a utility guy. Um, outfield, Hap, I think he's going to be ready uh, in for left. Bellinger in center with Tockman, right field, Suzuki. You know, so there's a, there's a couple more. You know, what are you going to do here or there? And that's what I'm talking about. You know, is is it Cooper or is some somebody else? I don't know. But when it's all said and done, the the team's pretty set now. And honestly, like, and I guess this is the last thing we'll talk about is we were waiting on like the Craig Council, like what you know, hey, things are going to be different. I haven't noticed a damn difference at all. Like it's exactly what I think David Ross would have done. Like <laughs> now yeah. that all changes when you start to like manage and figure out like, you know, how the bullpen's going to work and all of that stuff. But I, I haven't seen one thing this spring as far as the roster goes, that has surprised me at all. No, and nothing. Um, yeah. Nothing like earth shattering by any means, all pretty much status quo. Um, no long shots or anything like that. Nobody's really emerged. Um, really, the Cubs are just so banged up right now, man. Yeah. Like that's where uh, hopefully you get the injury, get the injury bug out of the way early on in the season. Um, you know, and healthier down the stretch. All right. Well, that does it for us on the friendly confines. But before we uh, bid everyone farewell, I want you to tell people about that great mortgage company that everyone knows is Catfish Mortgage. <laughs> That's right. The, the bait I'm and just switch kidding. shop. That's why yeah, yeah, the bait and switch shop, right? Uh, no, we appreciate it. Um, that's my direct email and cell phone number. Um, so even if you just want to talk Cubs baseball, you can do it there. Um, but no, we've been helping a lot of people with the mortgage rates. They've honestly stayed a little higher than we anticipated, um, than what a lot of people said, but so many have still been taking advantage 
of refinancing, consolidating debt. The country is in crazy amounts of um, credit card revolving debt. We saved families literally hundreds of dollars per month. We've eliminated thousands and tens of thousands in credit card debt. Um, so anyway, if you'd like to just chat, whether you're purchasing or if you want to look to see if a refi makes sense, again, that's my direct email and cell phone number. I um, would love to chat or talk Cubs baseball um, or you know whatever about your personal situation or scenario. All right. That's it, guys. Uh, get in the comments section. Tell me what you think. And again, uh, just winding it down now and getting ready for the start of the regular season. Appreciate all of you for hanging out with us here on the Cubs baseball channel. And uh, as I like to say every single day, go Cubs.